Hello everyone, this is John with P3 Safety Solutions and today I want to talk about my tips and tricks for setting up candidates for the computer-based test for the National Wireless Safety Alliance TTT1 and TTT2. So let's get started. So first off we got to go to the NWSA website. The NWSA website is nws-a.org. This gets us to the National Wireless Safety Alliance website and this is where I'm going to be using the tabs and the drop down menu so that I can set up my computer based test. So right here in the first tab you see get certified at the top. I'm going to scroll down to telecommunication tower technician and I want to click on that button. That'll bring up the next website and this site is the telecommunications tower technician and you can see you can scroll between English and Spanish and it gives you the information on the two levels of the NWSA's TTT1 and the TTT2. Here's some radio buttons down here you can download the candidate handbook you can see the reference list find exam fees get registered find a test site discover CBT which is going to give more information on the computer-based test and then the practical exams which gives you information on the practical exams. Here we're going to click on get registered that'll bring up the next page. This is the page that you're going to be starting and will be using for both the TTT1 and the TTT2 computer-based testing application entry process. So here we have computer-based testing. You could download the handbook here. This will give you a PDF of the handbook. This gives you information on the test, the scheduling information through PSI, and then a test accommodations link down here on the first paragraph. Here's the information that you're going to need to input for the candidate in order to get the candidate ID and then further on go to the CBT. Here we have the full legal name, mailing address, date of birth, and email address. So for me, what I've done is I've set up a spreadsheet that helps me to capture all this information before I'm ready to input the candidate's information into the NWSA website. And I have that in what I call the candidate list setup. And so here I've just created a document which has the name, the date of birth, the candidate ID, once I receive that from the NWSA, I'll input that here in this column. Mailing address, telephone number, email address, and then company information. And I've set this up so that I can manage this database as I'm setting up computer-based testing as well as if I need to manage it through the practical exams when I do the practical exams. So I will put this a link to this document in the information below in the comments. So if you want to use this document to help set up, this, this is the easiest and fastest way that I've found uh, after doing hundreds of TTT1s and that the information is captured and it's easy to use for the computer-based test application. Now, when we're talking about the legal name, the name must be the same name as it's going to be provided to PSI at the time of testing. And that's because they use a driver's license or a legal document to identify the individual when they show up for the testing center. So please don't use any nicknames. Use the full legal name as it's shown on the driver's license. That will make things much easier as the candidate is moving into the computer-based testing and going over to PSI so that when they evaluate the ID, it's going to match the information in the application. Now with the mailing address, also do not place your company mailing address in the application. Again, this will help you on later on down the line. Is It will get kicked back by the NWSA if you put all of your employees' mailing addresses the same. They have to be individual mailing addresses to that candidate. So the candidate's mailing address needs to be good. Verify with the candidate that that mailing address is active and that they're going to be able to receive mail at that address. You're going to have the date of birth and then the email address. Payment's going to be done through a credit card. And here at the bottom, you're going to click that you understand the application process. 
Now the next screen is the choose your submission type. I suggest that all submissions be multiple applications if you are going to be a group administrator. A group administrator for this process means that you have an admin or somebody who's going to manage all of the candidates applications and receive all of the candidate applications confirmation pages. If you select single application and you put the candidate information into a single application then all of that information will only go to the candidate. So if you want to be a group administrator you must select multiple applications and I suggest if you're doing that for one or five or ten that you do multiple applications all the time. Now when you select multiple applications you come to the next page which brings you up to group application coordinator a group administrator. So this is where you as the group administrator or coordinator is going to input your information. So here I already have my information set up. Uh, everything with the red star is required including date of birth. So I don't mind you guys knowing how old I am. You can see everything is mostly drop down menu. So this is not my phone number. And you can also use shortcut keys and you can do copy and paste. So that makes it much easier, much faster. So we're going to have the email address and then we're going to select the company. So down here at the radio button, you see all candidates from the same company. I want to say yes. And if not, don't worry about that. You'll be able to add the candidates as many as you like from different companies. You will just have to input that information. So here I'm going to say that all, all candidates are from the same company. Again, I have this information set up in here. Okay, and I like to put the whole address into the mailing address and then I'm going to make sure that my radio buttons match. And once you start this process you only get one shot at it so make sure that your information is correct the first time before you move on. If not you'll have to delete the whole process and start over again. So here I have my information and as you can see each candidate will now have my employer um, information that's here. And now what I'm going to do is input the candidate information. Again, full legal name, date of birth, mailing address, cell phone number, email address, and fields marked with an asterisk are required. So I'm going to go back to my candidate setup list. I'm going to select John Doe. I'm just going to use the quick keys again to copy and paste the information into the form. So here we go, John Doe. Now, if you are inserting your last name and your candidate has multiple last names, either hyphenated or just multiple last names, make sure that both names are placed in the last name box. Don't use one of the names as the middle name. Just put both of them in the last name box. If they're senior, junior, first, second, third, you can put that in that section. Obviously, that one doesn't have a red asterisk. It's not required. Date of birth is required, so I'm going to go back to my candidate sheet. I see that this person is April 12th, 2021. So these are just drop downs. Okay. If the candidate was previously tested, previous, previously tested with another company, previously tested on their own, they're going to have a candidate ID. This is where you would input the candidate ID information. If they do not have a candidate ID, just leave it blank. We're going to input the mailing address. Again, I'm just going to copy and paste my mailing address, which is the easiest way to do that. You can see this person is in Phoenix, so we're going to finish the buttons off with adding the information. Home phone, we're going to just, again, just take that right from our candidate list, copy paste, and I just select suggest you paste paste. Most candidates will just put their cell phone number as a phone number, and so that's really not that particular. You could just put both numbers in the same there, and then same thing with the candidate email. Just going to go here, 
And this is why it helps because you already have it, the information set up. You don't have to type it in. And it goes pretty fast when you're dealing with 16 candidates. If you've had a certificate number and you're retesting, you could put your previous certificate number in this box. You don't have to. Again, the candidate and employer information is already set up. And then also, if the candidate needs ADA compliance uh, at the testing center, you're going to check the testing box for ADA compliance here. So we're going to click Next. That's going to take us to the certification. And so we're going to do Initial Certification or Recertification. This one is going to be Initial. And then which exam are we taking? Are we taking TTT1, TTT2, A&L, or Foreman? This one's going to be for TTT1. Now when you click on it, you see it comes up English or Spanish. So these are the only two languages that can be selected currently. And we want to make sure that you're selecting the appropriate one. So we're going to do English, Spanish. Same thing for TTT2. You can set up multiple exams at once if you'd like. Uh, for this one, we're just going to stay with TTT1. Okay, so this gives you your review page, the name of the person, John Doe, the telecommunication TTT1, and then the fees. And then it gives you the ability to submit another application. So we're going to do one more. Uh, this one we're going to do Jane Doe. Same thing, just copy paste using my quick keys. Okay, her birthday is September 9th, 1999. And then we're just going to use the information directly from our candidate list. And you can see that uh, once you start to build information into the website, uh, it will keep some of the information. So it gets a little bit quicker as you go. You can see how fast that was. I'm going to do initial. Okay, now we've just completed two candidates and now we want to finish and pay. So once we finish and pay, we're going to click the finish and pay button. That's going to take us to the billing information section. You can see the total amount due is right here. And then it's going to give you a list on the right hand side of your total candidates with your total amount due. If you have a lot of candidates in the system, then you will need to scroll down. And then be aware that you will be charged an additional $30 if your application is incomplete. So you want to make sure, again, all that information is complete. Verify that the names are correct, the addresses are correct. You'll be able to see all the information entered here and that you have the correct certification that you'd like to use. And then you enter your information here. You click Submit. And then once you submit that application, you will receive a confirmation email from the NWSA. That concludes this portion of our NWSA submission process. Look for our another video where we set up PSI and scheduling and show you how to set up PSI scheduling a little bit quicker and get the information a little bit faster so you can set up multiple computer-based tests at one time. Again, my name is John Cordoba with P3 Safety Solutions, and I want to thank you for listening. Check us out on p3safetysolutions.com. Look us up on Facebook, and you can find me on LinkedIn, John Cordoba.